Hello everyone, welcome back to The Greatest. If you're new here, hi, I'm Cherry, and this channel is about success-driven tools and strategies for new bloggers to achieve clarity and focus. Today's video is part two of our How to Start a Pet Blog tutorial. In the first video, we were able to cover the basic setup starting from buying the domain name all the way to customizing the WordPress theme and connecting the site to Google Analytics and Search Console. This time, we will cover the steps I missed in the first video and do a little bit of polishing, if you will, so we can have this blog ready to go live and get monetized. As usual, links to all the blogging tools that I will use today and the first video, in case you missed it, will be in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do today is to update the admin password. So to do this, just go to your dashboard, scroll down and click users. And click edit. Scroll down. And here under account management, you can find this part that says new password. Just click generate password. You can keep this or you can change it and um, use something that is easy for you to remember, but difficult to guess. So if you're good with your password, just click hide and then update profile so like let's, let's let's try it out okay and update profile and once it says profile updated you're ready to go password is already changed Next, second thing we need to do is to update the login page. In the first video, I installed a plugin which is called the WPS Hide Login. This plugin allows us to hide the default login page, which is usually yourwebsite.com forward slash WP admin. So let us go back to our dashboard. So there you go. At the top, as you can see, it says WP Admin, which is the default login page for WordPress websites. So in order for us to add you know, security to the site, we need to remove WP Admin and change it into something else. Just like what we did with the password, think of something that is easy for you to remember, but difficult to guess for others. So to do this, you go to settings and click WPS hide login. Okay, scroll down. And as you can see, um, right now, it's no longer WP admin, but instead it's my name. Okay, but just for the sake of this uh, tutorial, let, let me change it and try something else. Let's say... Um, let's have the word friends and then save changes and then we're going to log out and try to log back in okay okay so right now we are logged out of our wordpress website let us try to log back in using the default login page wp admin And as you can see, we are getting an error message, error 404, that says the page cannot be found. Let's try something else. If we change it to .com forward slash login, same thing, page can't be found. Okay. However, if we change the word login, 
can add friends. There you go. There you have it. Our login page. Okay, so let us log back in and continue to our uh, next step dashboard. The next thing that we need to do is to remove the themes that are not in use. So in the first video, I used the theme Mina Light, and during the cleanup, I wasn't able to remove the others that were not going to use. That's why we're doing it today. So to do a quick cleanup for the, the themes, just go to Appearance, Themes. And there you go, we have three others that we're not going to use in this blog, so we'll remove them one by one. So to do this, just click and then delete, then press OK. Next, again, click, delete, OK. One more, click, delete, OK. And there you go. All right, next is number four. We're going activated and installed on our WordPress blog. The next thing that we need to do, number four, is to add legal pages and place them in the footer widget. Now, legal pages are very important because this allows your website to be protected legally, even if it's just a new blog even if it's just newly set up. Um, I purchased my legal pages from Amira of aselfguru.com. So if you're interested with these legal pages, I will have the link in the description where you can buy them. So how, can, how do we add these? Let us go back to our WordPress dashboard. Go to Pages. And then add new. Well, for now, we have the privacy policy um, from WordPress. So I'll just leave that as draft. Then we'll add two more. That is the Disclaimer, publish, go back, add new, and then we have the terms and conditions. Publish. All right, and then go back. Now, for our legal pages, um, I just copy and page the template that I will that I purchased from Amira of SelfGuru.com. So you just copy the templates and then place it here, just like a regular blog post. So there you go. Now I want these three to appear on my footer widget. So to do this, just go to appearance, widgets, all right, and then Click Instagram footer and then I will add pages there and I click done. Let's visit the site. And there you go. Oh, hold on. The other page is still tagged as draft. So let me change that first. So quick edit. Let's 
change it to published update all right go back to our website refresh and there you go so they're now now showing up at the bottom okay all right now pages our legal pages are now showing up at the bottom okay this is going to show up on all pages by the way all right so let us move on to the next step and that is number five we have to edit so the next step that we're going to do today is to edit our work with me page now i'm not going to do anything fancy here because the blog is brand new so i will just put um one paragraph there if you want to add um, a form in this page you may do so you just go to our dashboard go to plugins and add contact form 7 which is one of the most common um, contact forms out there but for th this time for this blog I wouldn't recommend it because again it's brand new and second that is to avoid getting spam emails so just to make it you know professional I will just leave a, a, a paragraph here on where you know companies or other bloggers can collaborate with me with this blog by giving my best email address and then click update there you go so let's do a quick preview of this work with me page and there you go all right so that's it number six is we need to configure rank math plugin so this is for SEO purposes and to do this we have to go back to our dashboard and click rank math all right so let us do let us check if everything is set up okay so it says that the account is not connected yet all right so we need to go ahead and set up wizard all right so start the wizard okay so let's just try personal blog first um, save and continue okay and next we need authorization code from google search console so. okay allow Copy this code, place it here, all right, and then save and continue. And there you go. 
our site is ready. Return to dashboard. Okay, let's go back to help. Let's check if... Oh, okay, so it's still not connected. Let's connect now. And we're just going to connect it using my Google account. There you go. Allow. And says OK. And there you go. OK, so it's it now says it count is connected. All right, so we're good to go. Next, let us proceed to number seven. And that is we are good to go. It says the account is already connected. Let's move on to the next. And that is to install another plugin, which is the GDPR Cookie Consent plugin. So to do this, just go to Plugins, Add New, then GDPR. There you go. Install now. And activate. Now, what is this plugin for? Now, if you are, of course, our website can be reached by people from around the world. Plugin is for the GDPR cookie consent. Here is a website that a website that I want to share. So according to this, um, the GDPR or General Data Protection Regulation is a privacy and security law, which is the toughest in the world. So it was regulated effective May 25, 2018. And this is drafted and passed by the European Union, and it imposes obligations onto organizations anywhere so long as they target or collect data related to people in the EU. So if your blog reaches people from the UK or from uh, countries under EU or the European Union, you have to have the GDPR consent added on your blog. So to know more about this regulation or this um, policy, I will also have this website linked in the description. So let's take a look. How does it look? I mean, this plugin. When we go to visit site, there you go. As you can see at the bottom, there is a reminder that this website is using cookies to improve your experience. So. At least you are giving the readers an option to proceed and accept your terms and conditions or exit and use another website instead for information. And this is also the reason why we added legal pages at the bottom of our homepage to add to protect our business, our blog, and also our readers. Okay. Next, number eight is to install WP Instant Feeds. Let me close this first, go back to Plugins, and click Add New. Now, the WP Instant Feeds plugin will help you add your Instagram feed on your blog. So just install and 
activate. Now for now, this blog has an Instagram account, but I am not posting anything there yet. So nothing is going to show up. But just to give you an idea of how it will work, let me use a, a different account to demonstrate. So let us go to um, appearance widgets. And let us try to add an Instagram profile on our sidebar. So to do this, scroll down and look for WP Instant Feeds, add widget. All right, so let's, let us use um, my Instagram for now. So. Okay, change large to small and then save. And then let's visit our site to take a look. There you go. Hold on, let me refresh. There. All right, there you go. So now you're seeing my Instagram feed here. But let's try to edit and change the number of items per row let's say three save okay then refresh there you go all right so now my instagram feed is showing up now let's try to do it at the bottom let's see how it looks so let's go back to widgets go to instagram footer oh hold on no WP Instant Feeds, check Instagram footer, add widget, add our username, change it to small, three items, save, and then refresh the page. And there you go. So let's make it a bit smaller. Let's just have default and then thumbnail. Save. All right, let's go back. And there you go. So now you're seeing my Instagram feed here. Okay, so let's edit one more time and just Put like six photos instead of nine. Save. Refresh. And there you go. All right. So we now have our Instagram feed showing at the bottom and at the side. All right. Next, number nine. We have to edit our settings for social warfare. Now, what is social warfare? It's a plugin which allows you to easily share your blog posts on social media and even LinkedIn. So these are the buttons under the social warfare plugin. But as you can see, we need to edit it because it's showing twice there. There. So let us go back to our dashboard and click social warfare. There you go. So for now, since this is a brand new account, I don't want the share accounts showing up. So I'll just click off here. All right. And then for positioning of the share buttons, we will put, instead of both above and below, I'll change it to above. Same thing with archive and categories. But for posts, I'll leave it on. Uh, the button's showing above and below. So let's see. Save changes. All right. 
Then let's visit our site again. There you go. So it's, it's just showing one set of social media buttons per blog post. Okay, let's check for every post. All right, so it's still showing too because in the middle, this is where your post will appear. So that's perfectly fine because the buttons will appear above and below the blog, the blog post. All right. So, and lastly, to wrap up this video and to wrap up this blog and ready to be live and monetized, we need to back up our website. So every time you make any changes on your blog, make sure to always back up your website in case something happens or um, you want to reset everything or and then change your mind, you can still go back to its initial setup. All right. So to do this, just go to settings and click updraft plus backups. All right. Nothing to do here, nothing fancy. Just click backup now and backup now. All right, so it says here that the back ha backup has finished running. And at the bottom, you can see the backup date and the time. So in case something happens to the website, we were able to save everything that we have done so far and then just, you know, click restore. Now for Updraft Plus plugin, it can store up to two um, sets of files for your backup. So just in case, let's say you made changes today or let's say five days later, you will make a few changes. You can remove this one, delete this one, and then just click back up now for a new file. Just in case so that you won't be confused on which is the, the latest file that you backed up. All right. So that's about it to our video on how to start a pet blog. And thank you so much for sticking around. If you are new to my channel, please do not forget to like this video and subscribe. Comment below if you have questions. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.